In today's video, we're going to try to recreate the Wilson $2,500 basketball. I'm sure you've seen the viral videos all over the internet of people trying to recreate these and they either kind of work or they just break and don't work at all. So by the end of this video, I'm either going to have you wanting to run to your printer and try to make one or I'm just going to save you a bunch of time and headache and show you exactly what not to do. So I essentially had these basketballs in order of least faith and most faith that they're going to work. If you love 3D printing, I'm sure you saw Uncle Jesse's video. He did a great video on this and he showed me what not to do and what filaments not to try. So I took the information from that video and bought a whole different array of filaments that we can try out here. So first off, we have the Overture Ball that this is the video I saw that went viral. Everyone probably saw the same Overture Super PLA. So I thought this was interesting. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna order that filament and I got it and it's hard. It has no flex. It's essentially, I might make, make some people mad with this, but this is not a basketball. This is hard plastic. This is a glorified wiffle ball. Take this to any basketball court and ask someone to play with it and they're gonna laugh at you. It needs that rubbery, soft basketball feel. And the more you bounce on asphalt or concrete or something like that, it's gonna get even more rough. Imagine taking this thing to the face on accident with a missed pass or something like that. So, sure this may bounce, but when you scale it to size, they're gonna break. I've, I have, this is ASA, I also have no faith in this one either. So these other filaments are softer, TPUs, flexible filaments, but let's go ahead and bounce these and see how they do. So Jess, already broke a ball. Pull it apart. <laughs> so ASA is not a good option. I mean, that's surprising. So there's a zero percent chance this would work full size. Yeah, it'll so just snap over. in half. All right, do the same thing with this one. This one is gonna break too. Just drop it. Don't throw it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay, as we expected. They're just too hard. These aren't, like this isn't, it just doesn't feel like a basketball. Are these the so same? So this is a small one. This is TPU 95 by Sunlu, and this is TPU 98, whatever brand this is, never heard of it. Uncle Jesse did TPU 85, and it was just too soft. It was just floppy. So 95 actually feels pretty good. I also have a bigger one if this one works decent. Now. Okay, we'll do it at the same time. Ready? One, two, Wow. about the same, okay. Dribble it. Ah, see it broke. It's too dense. That one broke? Right there. And this one you can, you can chuck it. But, but you can see it, doesn't it bounce has that well. flex, but it's still too dense. And it also doesn't really break in line like them other ones do. You can see really, it clearly breaks on the lines. So this is TPU 98. I already broke this one. I'll, I'll insert the footage. I pulled the Jess. He did it. Oh, I'm so disappointed in myself. So I was all excited, started bouncing it, and I wasn't filming. I thought I was, but... Yeah, see it? That's not the one. So this is the 95. What's that? This, it's not gonna bounce because I already broke it, but we'll just do it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh, no bounce. I mean, it bounces, but... Give it like a... Don't! <laughs> no, don't. Just give it like a normal dribble. Because I'd rather it not explode if I don't have to. Well, it didn't explode. But like, this one feels pretty good. But it bounces like... But yeah, it just doesn't have that... Ooh, this what is thing... that? Was that oh, from, it's from this? this one. It's from this one. Adorixia Art, which is the green, and the white is this... Uh, Flash Forge. So I printed the small one first because again the small ones are gonna bounce better than the big ones and less likely to break. So this is the Artrixia or whatever. And this one actually bounces pretty dang good. As you can see it's got a lot better feedback than the TPU 95. Bounce that one now. I don't, I've never bounced that one actually. You wanna bounce them together? So that... No, because it's the same, so just... Okay. Let oh, me try it to broke. Like, it broke? Yep, there it is. <laughs> There's no good... See, this one bounces the best. Which 
is unfortunate. Hmm. You need to make another one of Give these. Give it like a good bounce. Well, I learned a lot printing this, so I might get, I might buy this in black. I'm trying and to do print. one more, and one full, more. Size. full size. Man, I'm bummed this but one But you have to make sure you don't f*** the supports. Well, the, the, the temperature was too hot, so it fused to it. Yeah. Okay, so that's the balance test. Both these TPUs printed great. I had no issues printing them. But again, too dense. If you want to print one and have some 95A, I think it's worth a shot because this held together and she bounced it pretty hard and I don't see any cracks. And again, it printed decent. Supports came off nice, printed good. TPU 95A is an option. But the thing I'm concerned about is TPU 95A and TPU 98A there seems to be a pretty big difference in flex here, and I don't know if them a couple points. So how accurate is this system, and are these companies actually following some sort of regulation, or is this just like the wild, wild west, and it's, it's about 95? So I would be curious to try different TPUs in the 95 and up range, like a TPU 100 in a different brand, or a different type of 95. So that's how I feel about TPU filaments. 85 is too soft, 95 is decent, but a little harder would be great. But again, would a different brand react differently? I'm assuming most people aren't going to have this flexible PLA on hand. I, I think people are actually going to have some TPU on hand, but this flexible PLA worked pretty good. I'm honestly surprised this one broke as this smaller ball bounced so well. This stuff, I had a really hard time. I'll insert the footage of this, but this one bounced the best, so I may buy one more roll. I know I said I was done with basketballs, but just to print one good basketball. 77 hour print and it fails when it's almost done. God. Like that one? Beautiful. Oh, oh I pulled the tricep. Oh, cramp. God, I don't even like that. Probably wasted a whole day messing with this filament. Ooh. Friends. <laughs> At least it didn't ruin my build plate. I printed this at 225. It was too hot as the supports fused to it. And it gave me a heck of a time getting it off the print bed, but I should have used glue stick as this stuff really sticks to the bed. So I would print this at about 210 and I printed it with the TPU profile and a max volumetric flow rate of three. So I, I would do a few more tests to get this printing good as I just printed this with a general TPU profile and it gave me a hard time, but it bounced so well. So Flash Forge I think is our current best option here. This one and this one, I got that top layer shift. I don't understand why, I think it's EMI. Every other basketball printed flawlessly, but the 100% scale. So I, if you know, tell me, but I gotta figure that out. So something you should also be aware of, which I was not aware of until I threw these in the slicer, these take forever to print. So these softer type filaments, you gotta print pretty slow to begin with. So this full size basketball, I think took 77 hours and then it failed, which is disappointing. But expect two and a half days to print 90% to a full size ball. And these smaller ones here take about just over a full day of print time. Um, there's also a few different styles of these basketballs. Uh, this one has a pretty straightforward, like honeycomb look to it. This first one I printed, I'll link down below the files I used, but this first one has like a lattice that goes through the holes. So when I painted the supports on the bottom, they all got stuck in there and it came off horribly. So I switched to this easier to print design. So I would be curious to see if this was like, say a half inch or inch thick with the same hex design, maybe even bigger circles, how that would bounce. I would also be interested in if there was maybe some sort of like hex pattern throughout the whole thing, because it doesn't have to look like the airless basketball. It just has to be an airless basketball. So some sort of design on the inside that makes it maybe a little bit more durable. Honestly, with an FDM printer, I don't think this is possible. The Wilson basketball was not printed on a hobbyist FDM style printer. I forgot the kind of printer it was printed on. You can look it up, but 
Wilson knows we can't recreate it. That's why it's $2,500 and people that are making these basketballs aren't getting sued. They have it figured out. They spent thousands and thousands of dollars figuring this out and they know we can't do it. That's just my opinion. But we have proved we can get close. And again, if I was to do this again, I would, what, I'm not even gonna waste my time with these hard type filaments. These flexi flexible PLAs seem to be the answer. Maybe the TPUs, but again, these, most people that are making these are for nostalgia. You can buy a basketball for the same price as it would cost to essentially print one of these. You're gonna expect to sp spend 30 to $40 per roll on any sort of flexible filament like this. So another thing about these flexible PLAs and TPUs is the soft filaments are way more susceptible to absorbing moisture than like a typical PLA or something like that. So you have to make sure they're dry. So Sunlu sent me this beautiful machine here. It's a four roll filament dryer. It has all these little knobs to print directly out of it. That's what I'm printing out of on the Q1 Pro. Beautiful display, cool little lights. I've had all the spools staging in here essentially and then I have the Sunlu filament dryer here that I printed directly out of halfway through I just pushed start just to ensure it was dry and then I have the Creality one over here this one is also very good I will add links to the description for all the printers used in the video this filament dryer all the filament I used so if you want to pick any of that stuff up head to the description and click through any of those links and we get a small kickback at no cost to you it's a great way to support the channel but either way, we appreciate you watching the video. The last and final basketball. Man, these stick. Definitely use glue stick. <laughs>